So I work a lot with, obviously, with fabric and, uh, and specifically with linen. And uh, it's not uh, linen that, um, you know, in a, in a, I suppose in a normal commercial sense that you would find in store, buy in store, but it's, uh, it's um, historic linens that come from domestic settings and used to belong to families who would uh, um, collect them or have them as part of an estate. All of this comes from in my background in working with textiles and fabric and my family's history of collecting fabrics. My grandmother was very much into embroidery. This was in Somalia, but uh, different patterns of embroidery because it was a traditional craft that you would learn in school. I'm interested in not just textiles but also like natural resources and and uh, minerals and how those things are like traded between countries and how it's dominated by certain you know governing bodies I suppose when it comes to um, not just um, you know the desert or the water resources in the desert and you know, my, my family history background as a nomadic tribe and how they move around um, from location to location to not obviously my own family, but as a history and um, how they move around from location to location depending on those resources. I've always been quite interested in how objects contain history and memory, I suppose. But also uh, fabric is... It's, it's such a domestic thing, and I'm also interested in the domesticity of that. It's a circular nature. I mean, I'm interested in the circular nature of fabric, both in a geopolitical sense, but also in a, in a, as a domestic use, and the history holds for families. Making the work, I see it almost like a performance process, which is something you think of when you're actually making the work, like how I fold the material or how I lay it out on the ground. Different aspects of my work or different subjects that I'm interested in make me go to all these different countries. So it's always very specific. For instance, my interest in sourcing material from Somalia came from the stories I would hear, like almost like myths or legends, or if they, and I, I was curious to like to know what is real and what's fictional. I think each material has a, it has a, there's an idea behind it. And for instance, you know, traveling to the seed bank in Svalbard was also one of those where I'm, I was interested in like, what was the initial seed? What, what can I find um, to go back to the source of my material rather than the, the, you know, the dilution that happens when, when mediums evolve. The studio is almost like a test kitchen where I do actually have a physical kitchen in my studio. So I, a lot of the process of um, like getting the actual pigment out of the plant material happens in a process that's almost like cooking. I'm very interested in how um, earth is stacked um, and the different layers of earth and how that reappears in architecture, for instance. The title of the 
exhibition, which is Caspar, um, is um, it means in Arabic it means a fort or a fortress, and um, I think it, it definitely comes from the last couple of years and how my studio practice has become more contained in itself. Like how previously I would just travel around to collect all these materials, but in the in the last couple of years I've found a place where all these different elements coexist in one place. So I see my studio as the Casper, which is and where, where it comes from. But also at the same time looking at, you know, things that I was looking at just before I went into this contained space and how I was um, using the terracotta or thinking of how to handle different layers of the earth in my in my work and how each layer has its own pigment, its own mineral and its own, um, not only like the connotations of the depth and the surface, like stacking the fabric and starting with the, the ground and building something upwards. And so it's, that's the reference, it's like a fort around my studio, or the studio is the fort, but it's also the stacking of the work. I've been looking a lot at um, rammed earth architecture, for instance, and how it's a, like an environmental method of building um, uh, properties or like buildings and houses in often in desert regions and how um, it's like the best best way to, to do something. So the title somehow relates to what's coming also. It's not just now, but it's also for the future. This is also um, my process where I, after a certain period of time, when I've developed one type of work, I would start introducing a new work. And it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a whole series of works, but there will be a couple of them into an exhibition, mm -hmm. which in this exhibition, for instance, there's three similar works um, that are all made with rust. And, uh, well, rust as a dye material, when I um, moved into my new studio, which is in an area of Stockholm, where um, it's currently a nature reserve and a recreational area, but initially it was the factory and the testing ground for Alfred Nobel's uh, um, dynamite factory. Like you see the traces of the bunkers where he used to blow up the dynamite, but you also and, but they also had this problem with um, the chemicals from that time seeping into the ground and they had to clean that out. So th this is a process that took about three years and in that there were a lot of materials or like metal parts that were found. So the metal parts are, um, that's where the rust comes from. They undergo a process of cleaning and, and soaking and outsourcing the, the chemical out of the metal parts. So I'm, I'm really interested because I kind of, I'm interested in this because it feels like it somehow ties back into obviously using the earth as a source, but also the industrial history of the, the fabrics that I use, you know, them being as a object of trade, um, which is a, I, I think almost like a peacekeeping gift and, but also um, how the textiles went from being um, hand-woven and a domestic object to becoming an industrialized production. And this really reappears in the initials of the fabrics. Mm -hmm. Like when you see different types of um, embroideries for different, uh, and like different times. Yeah. And what's machine-made and what's handmade and what's um, industrial and, and so on. So.